All right, folks, we're going to continue with our theme of utility maximization. Uh, remember, we are dealing with, in microeconomics, we've got uh, households and we have firms. And we learned that households, they want to maximize their utility, while firms or businesses want to maximize their profit. So we've set businesses aside just for a couple lessons, and we're focusing on households. Okay. Now, in the last video, we looked at utility maximization from a graphical point of view. We learned about indifference curves and budget lines, and we saw how we could use both of those tools together to try and get an understanding of how individuals or how households try to get the most utility given the limitations of their resources, that's represented by the budget constraint, and their unlimited wants, which is represented by the indifference curves, okay? So today we're gonna do basically the same thing only instead of doing it graphically, we're going to do it numerically. Now, when I say numerically, you may not understand necessarily what that means. When we do something numerical in math, we are usually doing it with uh, tables of values. You know, if you ever, when you were in math class, if your teacher ever had you take uh, an equation and plug in a bunch of numbers and make a bunch of X's and then find out what all the Y values were, that was a numerical exercise. You made a table of values. Oftentimes, your teacher would then have you take those t that table of values and make a graph out of it, right? Uh, well, that's basically what's going on here is you have the numerical and then you have the graphical. Well, we just finished doing the graphical and now we're going to do the numerical. Now, in most cases or in my experience, people prefer the numerical over the graphical. Uh, that may not be you, but it could be you. Uh, so today, you might like this lesson better than the lesson on, uh, on budget constraints and indifference curves. But both of them are important for understanding consumer behavior, for understanding utility maximization. Now, in order to understand, to begin understanding utility maximization from a numerical point of view, we need to understand three very important concepts. Well, really, it's four very important concepts in microeconomics, but we're going to start with three of them. And that's what this particular uh, um, segment is about. What we're going to learn about in this segment is, uh, I call it marginal average total. Okay, so uh, you might remember it as MAT, M A. T, okay, marginal average total, okay? These are just three important concepts in microeconomics uh, that if you don't understand them, you will never have a full understanding of economics. Gotta understand the marginal, gotta understand the average, gotta understand the total. And the way that I'm gonna explain them to you, instead of just giving you definitions, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an example, and then really I'm only gonna give you a, a definition of marginal in this particular context. Now, since we're dealing with utility maximization, these ideas of marginal average and total can be applied to all kinds of situations. We're dealing with utility, so what we're gonna be looking at is marginal utility, average utility, and total utility, okay? Uh, and to give you just a, a beginning understanding, uh, the idea of uh, total utility, total utility, we've already seen that. Like on the indifference curve, okay, when you see the indifference curve and over here it says utility is equal to uh, 15, that is, a, that is total utility. Total utility is all of the utility that an individual gets out of doing something, out of consuming a combination of products, okay? So if you go to dinner and uh, there's a buffet and you select maybe a piece of chicken, you select maybe some macaroni and cheese, maybe you select a couple pieces of bread and some vegetables and that's going to be your meal. All of the satisfaction that you get out of that meal, that is your total utility, okay? It's all of the utility that you get, all right? And then we'll, get, we'll move on to average and marginal in just a minute. 
So let me, uh, let me generate, manufacture a, a, an artificial situation here. Uh, so whenever you see Q, that generally represents quantity. It's a number of things, okay? Now, quantity can be broken down in a lot of different ways, but uh, in this particular case, we're gonna, th we're gonna think about purchasing items, okay? So purchasing and consuming. So for example, you may purchase, um, well, I like to go to the QT sometimes, and at QT, they have these roller grills. You may have seen the roller grills before. And one of my favorite snacks that they have on the roller grill, they're called taquitos. They're like, you know, little tacos that are rolled up really tightly. They're about this long and they're, and they're kind of cylindrical. And they roll around on the roller grill and they can put all kinds of good stuff inside of those taquitos. Like they might put just cheese. So now it's more like a quesadilla, but a rolled up quesadilla. They might put chicken in there or steak in there or something like that. And I like these quesadillas, but I have to avoid them because they can be very bad for my health. Okay. Well, I could purchase one day zero quesadillas, right? or excuse me, taquitos. I could purchase zero taquitos, or I could purchase one taquito. Uh, if I'm really kind of, you know, really want to enjoy the, the experience, I might purchase two taquitos. I could also purchase three taquitos, which is getting a little dangerous for my blood pressure, but nonetheless, I might have three taquitos. And if I'm feeling really dangerous and uh, risky, maybe I will purchase four taquitos, okay, uh, at QT, okay? And so this is representing how many of something a person might purchase and consume, okay? All right, and then what we can do is this, is we can understand, we can make a column here that we're going to call total utility, and what total utility is saying is how much satisfaction is this person or is this household getting out of consuming that many of each one of these items. So we can say that if I purchase zero taquitos, then I will get no satisfaction at all out of the taquitos. Therefore, the total utility that I would experience from zero taquitos is zero. Okay. But let's say that I decide to purchase one taquito and eat it, and now I'm gonna get some satisfaction. Now the taquito is gonna make me feel good, it's gonna taste good, I'm not gonna be hungry anymore, uh, and I'm gonna make up a number here because utility really is just a made up number. Uh, so let's say that I get 23, hang on, I need to line this up better. Let me put this one in first. Let's say that I, get t I would get 23 utility out of the first taquito, and I get zero utility if I consume no taquitos. Now, let's say that instead of buying one, if I were to, if I were to buy two taquitos and consume them, my overall satisfaction would be 50. But if I purchase and consume three taquitos, my overall satisfaction would be 67. And if I purchase four taquitos, my overall satisfaction would be 77. Now, it's important to understand, folks, that this idea of, um, of utility um, is, is an abstract idea. These are made-up numbers. You can't tell me how much satisfaction you get out of watching a movie and then compare and turn it into a number and then compare that number with your friend's number because all of these numbers are arbitrary. That is the problem with mathematics. Well, that's the problem that mathematics tries to solve, okay? Uh, you know, we have a fundamental problem as human beings. It's, it's a measurement problem. We want to try and measure everything. We don't want to know that something's good. We want to know how good. Why do we want to know how good it is? Because we want to compare it to how good something else is. And we want to be able to say that one thing is better than something else. And we turn everything into a number. And that's where grades come from in school. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan, but that's where grades come from. We want to be able to say that we understood this thing better than we understood that thing. We want to be able to say that this person understood it better than that person understood it. 
So we take your knowledge and your learning about any subject and we put a number on it. But those numbers, folks, are made up. And I know a lot of teachers don't think that they're made up, but they are made up. If they say, well, it was out of 100%, well, why out of 100%? Why are you even doing it out of a percent? Why don't you just do it as a score, which is what I do with some of my assignments. But I know I'm getting on a little tangent here, but it's very important. This concept of arbitrariness of numbers is very important in economics and it's very important in higher level learning. So start to, start to contemplate this idea of how arbitrary the numbers are that we assign to the things that we rate. Okay, grades are arbitrary. You know, you're rating, you know, out of five stars. That's meaningless. You know, how good was that restaurant? Oh, it's got 4.5 stars. What does that even mean? Well, it's 4.5 out of five. What does that mean? That doesn't tell me that I'm going to have a good experience. And so what we do is, and we do this with human beings, is we rate things. We put a number on it. Why? Because it makes us feel better in our tiny brains to be able to say, well, if this number is higher than that number, then this one must be better than this one, which is entirely untrue. The quality of something is far more complicated than a single number. So be very careful about rating things. But here we are rating the utility of taquitos, for lack of a better way of understanding uh, utility maximization. All right, so here we go, sir. Let's come back. So now what we want to do is, so this is the overall utility that we would get from consuming uh, different, different numbers of taquitos, okay? Uh, and so now what we want to understand is what's called marginal utility. Marginal utility, which I will often abbreviate as MU. So I might say MU, which means marginal utility. All right, so here, here we go. My definition for marginal utility. Let's go over here. Marginal utility. Now, first I need to explain the word marginal. Marginal basically means whenever, whenever you have one more or the next one. What you get or what you give when you want to move on to one more. Okay, so when I move on from zero taquitos up to one taquito, how much more for one more? As I move on from one to two, how much more do I get for one more? And we can do marginal in terms of both costs and benefits. When we say marginal utility, we're referring to a benefit because utility is the benefit that we get from consuming things. We could also do it with costs. We could say the marginal cost of uh, consuming one more taquito, okay? But what we're asking right now is, what is the marginal utility of each one of these taquitos? And, and so the definition of marginal utility is gonna be the additional utility received from consuming the next or one more unit of a product. Okay, so basically the idea is how much additional utility, how much more utility am I gonna get if I just have one more of these things? How much more utility than I already have am I gonna get if I have one more? And the way that you calculate marginal utility if you have total utility is, put here, to calculate subtract the new or the, the, the latest total utility minus the previous total utility.
Okay? So, if I want to know the marginal utility of the first taquito, I'm going to take the most recent total utility. So it's the total utility that goes along with that unit. And the total utility from consuming one taquito is 23. So excuse me, 23. Subtract away the previous total utility. So the one right behind it is zero. And 23 minus zero is equal to 23. So the, so the marginal utility of the first taquito is 23. The first taquito is going to give me 23 more utility. So now let's move on. Well, what is the marginal utility of the second taquito? Well, the total utility for consuming two taquitos is 50. But I have to subtract, I have to take away the utility that I had before I consumed that taquito. So before I consumed the second taquito, I already had 23 utility. I'm going to take that away so that I can see how much was added on, how much utility was added on when I consumed the second taquito. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do 50 minus 23. So 50 minus 23 is 27. And so the marginal utility of the second taquito is 27. Now, if we want to know the marginal utility of the third taquito, we have to do 67 minus 50, which is 17. And then to find the marginal utility of the fourth taquito, we have to do the total utility of four taquitos, which is 77, minus the total utility of three taquitos. 77 minus 67, that's 10. And so what we have here is, I'm going to get rid of these, 23 and 27. So, uh, so 23 and 27. And of course, there is no marginal utility for zero taquitos because we didn't have a, a, a taquito. So we're not going to put anything here. But, so what we now have is that the marginal utility of the first taquito is 23. I will improve my life by 23 utility if I eat one taquito. After I have eaten one taquito, I can improve my life a, a little more by 27 by having a second taquito. If I choose to have a third taquito, I will improve my life by 17. And if I choose to have a fourth taquito, I will improve my life by 10. Now here's what I want to show you here. This is really interesting. I now want to go back a couple lessons. Do you remember learning about the law of diminishing marginal benefit? Well, marginal benefit is the same thing as marginal utility because the, the benefit of consuming something is utility. And so the word benefit is a generalized term where utility is a very specific kind of benefit. Okay, so when we say the law of diminishing marginal benefit, we can also say the law of diminishing marginal utility. And here's what the law of diminishing marginal utility says. That under a fixed set of circumstances, that means on one afternoon, on one particular afternoon, as you keep trying to get utility from something, in this case from eating taquitos, your marginal utility will eventually begin to diminish. Now you can see after the first taquito, marginal utility actually goes up. We have an increase in marginal utility. But watch what happens after the second taquito. Our marginal utility now is diminishing. The third taquito doesn't give us as much satisfaction as the second one, and the fourth taquito doesn't give us, us as much satisfaction as the third one. And what, what will eventually happen is, if I keep cramming taquitos into my mouth, the benefit that I get from taquitos will approach zero and eventually go negative. Why would it go negative? Well, if I eat six, seven, or eight of these taquitos, that's going to hurt my stomach. It's going to make me sick maybe the next day, and it could actually negatively affect my health if I keep doing it in the long run. Okay, And so it looks to me like if I keep cons consuming taquitos, I'm going to get less and less utility from each of the subsequent taquitos, okay? All right, so 
This is how we calculate marginal utility. The last thing that I'm gonna show you how to calculate right now is average utility. So I'm gonna put another column on here. We're gonna call it average, average utility. Now you probably already know how to calculate an average. With an average, you add up a bunch of numbers and then you divide by how many there are, right? That's an average. Well, in this case, uh, and what that means is you, that, you're, that you're dividing total by quantity. How, uh, the total utility divided by the quantity of taquitos. So there is no average utility for the first one because we have zero divided by zero. That's, that's not a math thing. So we gotta move on to the first quantity. Uh, total utility for one taquito is 23 divided by one. So here we have 23 divided by one is 23. So the average utility that we're gonna get from one, consuming one taquito is 23. Average utility for two taquitos is gonna be total 50 divided by two. So 50 divided by two is 25. So the average utility per taquito when I consume two taquitos is 25 utility per taquito. Now for three, we're gonna do 67 divided by three. So 67 divided by three is going to be, let's see, we're gonna have 20, 22 and a third. So let's say 22.33 is the average utility for cons per, per taquito. Now, I want to explain this difference. Marginal utility is the, is the added utility for each one. But average utility is when you, when you give the same amount of utility to each unit. So average is different than marginal. And then lastly, for four, if I consume four taquitos, I'll get a total of 77 utility. So I have to, to find the average utility, I'll do 77 divided by four, 77 divided by four. I'm gonna grab a calculator for this one, even though I am a math person and I should be able to do this in my head. So let's see here, we're gonna do 77 divided by four. Well, that's gonna be 19.25, 19.25. And here's what I want you to see. I want you to notice What's happening as we increase the quantity of taquitos? Just like marginal utility, at first, our average utility goes up, but then what starts to happen is our average utility starts to go down, and that is normal in economics. That's normal with utility. The more you consume something, the less additional utility you get from each one, and the less utility you get per one that you consume as you keep consuming, okay? All right, so that is our subject of total, marginal, and average. What I'd like to do right now is I'd like to do one more example to give you a chance to do some calculations. All right, why don't you pause the video and see if you can fill out this, uh, fill out this table. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Let's see here. Uh, we're not going to do marginal utility for zero, but for one, our utility went from zero up to 11, so the marginal utility of the first product is 11. The second one brings our total utility up to 21 from 11, so 21 minus 11, that's 10. The third unit brings our utility up to 29 from 21, so 29 minus 21, that's 8. And then for the fourth one, 34 minus 29, that's 5. And for the fifth one, 37 minus 34, that's three. So the marginal utility of the fifth unit that's gonna be consumed is three. And as you can see, that the marginal utility, as our quantity increases, the marginal utility is diminishing, okay? Diminishing marginal utility, okay? Now to do the average utility, we're gonna do the total utility divided by the quantity. And so, you know, let me do this. Let's put TU divided by quantity, TU divided by quantity, all right? Okay, 11 divided by one, that's 11. Uh, 21 divided by two, that is 10.5. Um, 29 divided by three, that's gonna be 9.67. Uh, 34 divided by four, 
that's uh, 8.5, and then 37 divided by 5, that's 7.4, all right? And so, we, given total utility and quantity, we were able to calculate, identify marginal utility and average utility. Now I want to show you, I want to do one more example, and I want to show you uh, what we're going to do is we're going to reverse marginal utility and total utility. We're, I'm going to give you quantity and marginal utility and show you how to get total utility. All right, here's our situation. We, we didn't start at zero, and that's normal. Sometimes these tables will start somewhere in the middle of a quantity. So all we see is three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? Also, I want to say something about tables. In this particular case, quantity is what we call the independent variable. So quantity is the thing that's going up by ones. This is what we're starting with, and then the result is, if we have three, then the result is this much utility, this much marginal utility, and this much average utility. There are going to be times later in the semester where quantity is not the independent variable, where we have a different variable that is the independent, and that variable causes quantity, and then your quantities are not going to go up one at a time. But in many cases in microeconomics, your quantities go up by one at a time, and that's what's happening here. So, I've given you the marginal utility of each unit, and I've given you the a, a starting total utility. All we know is that total utility is going to be 29 if we consume three units. Now we want to know what is total utility going to be if we consume four units? Well, the only thing we can go on to try and find that is we have our starting total utility and we know that the marginal utility of the fourth unit is 17. So we know that if we consume a fourth unit, our total utility will go up by 17. So if 29 goes up by 17, that means we're adding 17 on. So we just have to do 29 plus 17, which is 46. So our total utility for consuming four units is going to be 46. Now, what is our total utility going to be for consuming five units? Well, we know that the fifth unit will cause our utility to go up by 13. Therefore, 46 plus 13 is 59. The marginal utility of the sixth unit is 8. So our total utility will go up by 8. 59 plus 8 is 67, and the seventh unit will cause our utility to go up by 2. 67 plus 2 is 69. Now let's calculate the average utility. So now that we have total utility, we don't need marginal utility anymore. To get average utility, it's total utility divided by quantity. So 29 divided by 3, I think we did that before, didn't we, is 9.67. 46 divided by 4, that's 11.5. So you can see the average utility is actually increasing. 59 divided by 5 is 11.8, still increasing. 67 divided by 6, 11.17. Now it's going down. Now this is interesting here. This is an interesting phenomenon. Marginal utility decreased on the fifth unit, but average utility didn't decrease until the sixth unit. Now that is not a principles level concept. I'm not going to dig into that, but if you are interested in microeconomics, you may want to consider getting a degree in economics. That is a very important phenomenon right there. I'm not going to go into it, but it is an important phenomenon that the marginal utility decreased first and then the average utility decreased. Last one here, 69 divided by 7 is 9.86. So the average utility for consuming 7 units, the average utility per unit is 9.86, okay? Well, the fourth thing I want to teach you is called marginal utility per price. Marginal utility 
per price. Okay, marginal utility per price is an important uh, is a, an important variable, especially in utility maximization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another column on here, and I'm going to call it M U slash dollar sign. That means marginal utility per price. This is very important for making decisions about maximizing utility. And it's a very simple concept. You do literally what you're looking at. In order to calculate marginal utility per price, you take the marginal utility of the, of the unit and you divide it by the price. So let's say that this object that's being purchased, let's say that this object has a price of uh, $3.75. Okay, so the price of the product is $3.75. And so, in order to find the marginal utility per price of each unit, and see that's the thing is, the marginal utility per price is going to change with every unit. Why? Because the marginal utility is changing with every unit. And so the way we're going to get this number is we just simply divide the marginal utility by the price. Now, the price isn't changing right now, but if you go to a higher level, it, you could find that the price changes the more that you consume. Okay, But generally speaking, we're going to go with a standard price. Like you go into Walmart, if you buy three tubes of to toothpaste, they're going to charge you the same price as if you bought four, five, six, or seven tubes of toothpaste. Okay, All right, so the price isn't going to change in, in, in what we're doing here in this lesson. So marginal utility per price, we're going to take the marginal utility, 15, and divide it by the price, $3.75. And so here, the marginal utility per price is 4. Okay, And now we're going to divide the marginal utility, 17, divided by $3.75, and we get 4.53. So the marginal utility per price has increased. Okay. Now we're going to divide 13 marginal utility by 375, and we get 3.47. Now the marginal utility per price looks like it's starting to decrease. And the reason the marginal ut utility per price is decreasing is because the marginal utility is decreasing. Okay? When the numerator gets smaller, the, the, the answer, the number, gets smaller. Now we're going to do 8 divided by 375 is 2.13. And then mar uh, marginal utility of 2 divided by 375, and that's 0 0.53, or just 0.53, okay? And that is the marginal utility per price. Now that you understand how to calculate these four concepts here and how to use them to create a numerical table, this is a numerical table. That's what it is. Now that you know how to create this numerical table, we can now apply it to maximizing utility.